Facebook was blowing up. X was all a Twitter. What about the opening ceremony of the Olympics in Paris? Now it's pretty much run its course. People are getting bored. Rightly so. Let's move on. But there is one more thing we want to talk about. Hi, this is Fred VK with the Blue Ridge Bible Talks. Welcome back to my front yard. And what we need to talk about is this statement that Jesus accepts everybody. And that is absolutely true. He accepts us who we are, where we are, what we're like, what we're doing, what we think. That's where he starts. What else does he have to work with? But you see, the whole life of faith in Jesus Christ, it begins with a realization that our ways aren't his ways, and his ways are the way. Today I want to talk about a pattern that shows up throughout the New Testament, and that is repentance, forgiveness, transformation. You have to have all of those. And we see it from the very beginning, from the preaching of John the Baptist. He was preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And people were being baptized by him for uh, confessing their sins. And thus, they were forgiven. Jesus had the same basic message, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but he was the actual one bringing it. And so as he preached that the gospel has come, believe this and change your life based on this. That's what people were doing. So yes, he ate with tax collectors and sinners and all kinds of loose people. And they were entering the kingdom of God ahead of the Pharisees, the religious leaders who didn't want to listen to Jesus. People were transformed. He talked to the woman at the well in Samaria and he confronted her with her lifestyle and it changed her. She went off and proclaimed that I think I found the Messiah and brought these people back and Jesus stayed with this group of Samaritans for a few days. I wonder what they talked about. We see it in the very famous story of the woman caught in adultery. Where's the man? Anyway, it was a setup. Hey, Jesus, we caught this woman in adultery right in the very act. Moses says, kill her. What do you say? Trap. If he says, kill her, then they could say, look, he's not a merciful person. He is just as bloodthirsty as anybody else. If he says, show her mercy, they would say, aha, here is someone who just flaunts the law of Moses, doesn't agree with it, has his own way. What does he say? Whichever of you is without sin, let you be the ones to cast the first stone. And they all split. And then it's just the woman and Jesus. Woman, where are your accusers? Well, they're all gone. Well, neither do I accuse you. But he says, one more thing. Go and sin no more. That is the transformation part. She put her faith in him we can assume. But other times we have it very clearly when people do that. Like Peter. When Jesus called him and did a miraculous catch of fish right in front of his eyes, Peter says, get away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Boy, that's broaching on to repentance. And Peter says, I'm oh, sorry, Jesus says, cheer up. From now on, I will make you fishers of men. Speaking to all the disciples at that point. And that's what he did. He transformed the rough-hewn fisherman and a, a tax collector and um, others and transformed them into his apostles, bearing his message. Now, when Jesus died, rose again, ascended to heaven, seated at God's right hand, he poured forth the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking here about the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And Peter stands up after this miraculous mighty rushing wind and people speaking in tongues. What is this all about? Well, let me tell you. This is all about, now here's the short form, Jesus has taken his place on the throne of God and has poured this out. Oh, by the way, this Jesus whom you crucified. Acts chapter 2. Pick it up in verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. 
God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and other apostles, Brothers, what must we do? You see, they've come to believe the truth of what Peter just said. So Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Repent. Forgiveness. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Transformation. Now, let me just go to one more verse. And this one is going to raise some hackles, but so be it. It is the truth of God. Now, this gospel message goes forth, goes out into the Gentile world. And now the Apostle Paul is writing to the believers in Corinth. And if you don't know this, they're a pretty screwed up bunch, to put it theologically. So he has to remind them, chapter 6, beginning in verse 9. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who, ha nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Only one of these sins in this list is politically acceptable and highlighted, and we're supposed to celebrate it. But you know what? It's not the sin to end all thin sins, but it's right up there with sins like greed and theft and drunkenness and swindling. All of this together, big package, bad, bad stuff. Jesus accepts you just the way you are. And he does. And he accepts these people. But they have repented. The problem is they're kind of falling back into things. They need the reminder. But do notice this. None of these people, none of these behaviors will result in anyone inheriting the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. That, my friends, is transformation. And do notice, it's a process. It's a whole life journey. You see, Jesus accepts us exactly where we are and who we are and what we're doing. But he has no intention of letting us stay there. His goal is to transform us. How? By washing, sanctification, which is a fancy word of making you holy, separating you from the world unto God, and then being justified, which means you are declared innocent in the eyes of God Almighty. All of this through Jesus Christ comes through repentance. He is rich with forgiveness, and he leads us into a transformed life. This is the gospel. I hope you've enjoyed this talk, and if you have, please, as I say, hit like and share, and by all means, subscribe. But please, drop me a comment, whether positive or negative. It's fine. Let's talk about it. Let's hash these things around. Okay? God bless you.